In this video, we solve problem 7.1.13 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. We're asked to use the sample data and confidence level given below to complete parts A through D. We're told that a research institute poll asked respondents if they felt vulnerable to identity theft. In the poll, N equals 1,026. So they um, interviewed 1,026 people and X equals 536 said yes, they do feel, uh, 536 of those people felt vulnerable to identity theft. We're asked to construct a 95% confidence interval um, or use a 95% confidence level. Um, part A asks us to find the best point estimate of the population proportion P, and we're asked to round to three decimal places. I will share my paper with you so I can show you how to work this problem. The population proportion, or the best point estimate of the population proportion, is that sample proportion, p hat. Remember when we studied uh, the distribution, the sampling distribution of that sample proportion, it turned out that this was an unbiased estimator of the population proportion, p hat, or of the population proportion, p. Um, so this is the best point estimate that we, can, um, that we have of the population proportion, p. So we usually take the um, number of successes out of the total number of trials. That's our p hat. So in this case, that's 536 people said yes out of the 1,026 that were interviewed. And I'll use my calculator to do the arithmetic. I'm gonna get p hat approximately equal to 0 0.522 when I round to three decimal places. Okay, now let's go back. I'll enter that 0 0.522 here. Let's see what the next part of the question is. It says identify the value of the margin of error E, and we're also asked to round to three decimal places. So E is the margin of error, and it's given by this formula. It's equal to Z sub alpha over two times the square root of P hat times Q hat over that sample size. Now Z sub alpha over two is the Z score um, at this upper boundary here. Now, if we're looking for a 95% confidence interval, that means the z sub alpha over two that we're looking for um, separates that 95% in the middle um, from this half of the alpha um, at the top here. So z sub alpha over two is right here. Now, if the confidence level is 95%, alpha is equal to one minus the 95%, but in decimal form, so alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And that means alpha over two is half of that 5% or two and a half percent. Or in other words, you can take that area under the curve and you're looking for the middle 95% for that confidence interval. You want half of the remaining 5% over here and the other half over here. So we want the Z score that gives us an area to the left of that 95% plus that two and a half percent of the area under the curve. So that's gonna be 97.5% of that area under the curve or in decimal form, 0 0.9750. That is the definition of Z sub alpha over two where alpha equals 5% or alpha over two is equal to 0 0.025. So this is Z sub 0 0.025 it separates that bottom 97.5% from the top 2.5%. And so that's what we want. So we would go to our table um, to find that. We'll go to table A2. And I would go to the positive z scores. 
we want the area to the left to be 97.5% or 0 0.9750. And there it is, 0 0.9750. Do you see it? It's right there. The z-square that goes with that is 1.9. This is 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 
Okay, we got one more question. Last one says, ooh, uh, interpret this confidence interval. Now the calculations are pretty simple, but this is one of the most important parts. We have to understand what it is that this confidence interval tells us. So it says, write a statement that correctly interprets the confidence interval. Choose the correct answer below. Part A says, there is a 95% chance that the true value of the population proportion will fall between the lower bound and the upper bound. It's not exactly correct. Um, part B says, there is a 95% of the sample proportions will fall between the lower bound and upper bound. Um, part C says one has 95% confidence that the interval from the lower bound to the upper bound actually does contain the true value of the population parameter. That's it. And the last one says we have 95% confidence that the sample proportion is equal to the population proportion. That's absolutely not true. Um, so that's how we interpret that confidence interval. This is saying if we continued this process and we um, created samples of size 1026 and we did this, um, let's say 20 times, then 19 out of 20 times, that's 95% of the time, the population, or excuse me, the confidence interval that we compute would contain the true value of that population proportion. Now we don't actually know what the population proportion is, but we're 95% confident that if we repeated this process, um, that interval would contain the true value 95% um, um, of the time. I hope that makes sense. So it's not that there's a 95% chance that the true value of the population proportion lies between these two numbers. It's that if we continue this process over and over again, there's a 95% um, chance um, that the interval that we're looking at will contain the true population proportion. So it's a little tricky.